my name is Brianna Manassi and this is my lesson five perception and analysis video. Um, so first question, based on your understanding of <clears throat> Herzberg's two-factor theory of job satisfaction, what types of incentives or employee programs are most likely to reduce job dissatisfaction? What types of incentives or employee programs are most likely to increase job satisfaction? Uh, so, one of the most well-known motivational theorists, Herzberg, um, he, like many other motivational theorists, believed that motivation is closely linked to um, the concept of what motivates a specific type of behavior at the workplace. Um, he considered two types of factors that either increase or decrease job satisfaction, which includes hygiene and motivation. So, basically, employees who are satisfied are more productive, they're more creative, they're more committed to their employers and their work, um, and they basically are satisfied with their job and what they do. Excuse me. Based on my understanding of this two-factor theory of job satisfaction, I believe that there are numerous types of incentives that employers or employee programs that employers can use to help reduce job dissatisfaction. So, um, this includes company policy and administration, um, supervision, uh, having a great relationship with your supervisor, having a good and positive work environment, income, um, having good relationship with your peers and your coworkers, um, personal life, a good um, work-life balance, um, status, having security, and things like that. I believe that there are all examples of hygiene aspects of um, job in order to reduce job unhappiness excuse me um if you were if a job was to address poor and obstructive company policies and provide effective um and supportive supervision and build a culture of respect and dignity for all team members that could be created um incentives or employee programs um that can reduce job satisfactions can be Ensuring competitive wages, uh, make sure, making sure that everyone has equal pay, um, providing meaningful work for all positions, um, offering job security as well. Um, you can also reduce job dissatisfaction by ensuring that a company's policy and administration, that if they're making sure that they're fair and they apply to all equally. Um, it is critical that all members of your staff have access to um, company policy and procedures, any manuals to make sure that uh, everything is being followed um, accordingly because of uh, the function of a supervisor is can be challenging and extremely hard. It is important to pick someone who has um, great leadership skills and the ability to handle um, hard work. Uh, employees must also develop positive relationships with their supervisors in order to maintain positive working relationships in a positive work environment as well. Um, checking that, making sure that everything is up to date and working properly and having some sense of urgency when um, something is broken or not working properly. Feel compelled to have it repaired as soon as possible so that the job can be done efficiently and effectively. Um, also, rewarding your employees for their hard work um, by increasing their pay or providing a monthly incentive. Um, excuse me. Um, fostering a healthy work and relationship with your colleagues. Um, have conversations with them. Interact with them. Work with them. Help them if they need any assistance with their work. Um, it is critical to maintain healthy work, a healthy work-life balance um, so that your team can be more productive and increase their job performance because a healthy work-life balance enables everyone to excel at their work while also maintaining their personal well-being outside of work as well. Um, 
as a leader, I do believe that it is um, their obligation to assist all members of the team in balancing the demands of their work in their personal lives. Um, motivators, on the other hand, um, they produce satisfaction through meeting people's demands for, a, for significance and personal progress. Um, it is elements like achievement, acknowledgement, um, responsibility, progression, and growth opportunities that motivate employees to be more productive and creative and more devoted to their work. Um, motivating employees can also establish um, a great and effective workplace as well as boosting their job satisfaction. So, in order to do that, leaders must recognize their staff for their hard work and acknowledge them and praise them for that. Um, employees that are motivated to perform more, they'll be more motivated to perform and do a better job at their job if they are commended, commended and recognized for their efforts. Um, you can do this by also giving words of encouragement, um, positive affirmations, let them know they're doing a good job, um, they excelled at this, or they helped the customer, acknowledge them and praise them for their um, accomplishments. Um, when employees feel that they have an important job with a lot of control, they feel more accomplished as well and motivated. Um, performance can also be rewarded with a promotion. Um, it could be either within that location or they can also go to another location or travel state to state out the country, wherever the case may be. Um, for example, when I was um, in retail management, I noticed that one of my sales associates demonstrated great managerial skills. Um, he was a leader. He helped his team. Um, he assisted with customers. Um, he did his figure eights. He, he knew how to do everything. And I love that. So it just so happened, we had an open position for a sales lead at the time. So I put in a good word with my store manager who then reached out to our regional manager, um, in regards to having an interview so that he can be promoted for that sales lead position. And he was. Um, and I also helped with his training and development so that he can become a great leader as well. Uh, so, according to Harrisburg, after the hygiene issues are resolved, the motivators will increase job satisfaction and drive production. Number two, compare McClendon's acquired needs theory and its emphasis on needs being shaped by experience and cultural background over time to Maslow's hierarchy of needs and ERG theory. Of these three theories, which do you think provides the most useful and realistic explanation for human development and motivation and why? So, um, I believe that the majority of motivational theories are based on the assumption that um, an employee's needs influence their motivation. Um, these demands are often inspired they often inspire behavior and um, are essential for living a healthy and productive life, both at home and at work. Um, according to McClendon, excuse me, um, people are motivated by um, accomplishment, affiliation, and power in the workplace. Um, things like goal or orientation, um, taking a risk. Um, and feedback on progression and achievements are some traits of someone who is focused on reaching their goals. Um, a person who wishes to be um, affiliated with or having a sense of belonging in a group usually wishes to be liked and prefers collaboration or competition. Um, they also are not fond of taking risks or uncertainty. Um, People who seek power um, seek to control and influence others. Um, they usually enjoy winning um, arguments, winning arguments, um, competition, um, status, and recognition. Um, Maslow suggested that a hierarchy of wants begins with the demands and progressing of progressing through safety, 
love, um, esteem, a sense of belonging, and self-actualization. So prior to motivating, motivating higher needs, um, needs at the bottom of the hierarchy needs to be met first. So at the bottom, we have our psychological demands, which includes your everyday needs. You need food, um, sleep, air, water. Um, moving on to the need for safety, shelter, and stability control um, contributes to security, um, love, sense of belonging. Um, there are examples of social ones. So according to the ERG theory, there are three types of core needs that um, needs to be met, which includes E for existence, R for relatedness, and G for growth. So Maslow's um, five human needs are basically condensed into three categories, which corresponds to Maslow's levels of psychological needs, um, social needs, and sex self-actualizational needs. Um, so the primary connection between these three theories, McClendon's theory of motivation, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and ERG's theory, is that they all operate on the um, premise that people are driven by needs and will do things to meet those wants as well. Um, as a result, uh, there basically are all need-based theories. Um, so these theories are also related to one another by um, emphasizing the importance of reaching our full potential, uh, forming relationships with others, and receiving respect from others as well. I believe that um, out of these three theories, the ERG theory provides the most useful and realistic explanation for human development and motivation. Because according to ERG's theory, people do not need to have um, satisfied their survival needs before being driven by their sense of belongingness need. Um, so individuals may prioritize necessities in different um, orders depending on their their life's journey. Um, for example, a, a starving actor um, may be motivated by their artistic growth at the expense of their survival. So they may not be able to pay their rent, but they're willing to go any length to pursue their passion. Um, so if a person believes that they're making great progression towards their goal, they may become increasingly motivated by growth, even if their need has not been fully met. So if a person is dissatisfied with their progression, on the other hand, in terms of growth, um, they may abandon it. So everyone has their own journey to success. And it's important that you walk in yours with integrity. So moving on to number three. Assume you are a manager of an auto dealership and all your salespeople and employees are achieving the goals they have set for themselves in terms of weekly car sales. On the surface, this would seem to be a good thing. However, what could be the problem with this? So, I believe that while it appears to be a good thing on the surface, the issue may be that employees are no longer challenged to accomplish their goals. So it's, it's important that employees understand that making mistakes, it's okay. It's acceptable because it allows you to overcome your fear of failure and develop wisdom. By making mistakes, you improve your skills and you learn from them and you grow in numerous of ways. Um, because mistakes educate us on what doesn't work and they also inspire us to try new things so only by learning from your mistakes will you improve from your judgment for example going back to retail <laughs> my location was the highest number in credit card applications for i want to say like three or four months in a row so as a result 
it was that was a great thing, but it gave our team uh, the impression that because we were on a winning streak, it was acceptable to undermine teamwork and increase internal competition. And it also increased internal competition. So while it is great that my staff is focused on their goals it is equally important to plan for the hard times and learn how to overcome those hard, those hurdles if they do arise. Number four, to what extent are perceptions of procedural justice versus distributive justice a matter of perception? How could managers reduce inaccurate perceptions of workplace inequities? Procedural justice refers to the concept of fairness and processes for resolving disputes. Um, so it is also a movement that promotes uh, positive organizational change, um, integrity in the workplace, and safety. It also entails that an employee's belief in the fairness of decision-making processes as well. So it usually um, manifests as clear, um, as a clear standard process that minimizes the influence of unconscious bias. For example, now I work in a cardiovascular medical facility and I discovered that all, sh all team members rather than just the clinical team have to wear short nails. So I work as a patient intake coordinator. So I was under the impression that that rule didn't apply to me, that it only applied to the clinical team since I have no physical interactions with the patients um, other than just scheduling them for their next procedures. Um, so I prefer to have long nails, as you can see, um, but it would be unfair to the clinical team that um, the company wouldn't allow all members to have long nails. So they changed the policy and required all team members to have short nails that um, don't have acrylic and they have to be a certain color. Um, so I was upset at first um, because I love wearing long nails, but I believe that it would be more fair and equal if the rules apply to everyone rather than just some of the team members. So um, some employees believe that outcomes, rights, and resources are equitable when they believe in distributive justice. So workers receiving equal pay for equal efforts is an example of distributive justice. So managers can reduce this by encouraging an open and honest communication, aka open door policy. Um, this basically um, communicates to employees that a supervisor is available to answer any questions, comments, concerns, um, any ideas, any uh, challenges that an employee may face. Um, it can help... Um, you, you can do this by making sure that an employee has access to the employee handbook um, that includes all written corporate policies and also offer to discuss any instances of perceived unfair treatment in the workplace as well. So the ultimate goal is to keep an open conversation and feedback and discuss any issues that um, employees may, may be experiencing. So managers can reduce this um, by ensuring a fair balance among all team members and provide um, fair compensation and also an understanding of what your team values.